uh, that could read our thoughts while we were asleep and convict us of thought crime and could pursue us after we were dead. Um, and in the name of which, priesthoods and other oligarchies and hierarchies would be set up to enforce God's law, uh, which is, of course, what exactly what does happen if you concede the proposition. So the the beginning of the struggle for human emancipation, in my opinion, which is why I recommend the Portable Atheist so highly to you, because it, it shows how this argument goes back to the dawn of, of uh, history. The original human emancipation is the emancipation from the idea of a celestial dictatorship. Who is this famous British uh, a- a- atheist who just recanted and uh, said that he's he's found faith or he's... There is a, a celebrated, well, reasonably celebrated English academic called Anthony Flew, F-L-E-W, who has, for the last 10 years of his... Uh, oh, no, I don't want... I shouldn't... No, I was about to make an ad hominem remark. Who, in his dotage, actually, I, I think I may as well just come right out and say it, has been every year changing his mind. Uh, to and from, back and forth against the existence of God. I think this last time he said he thought there was a God. I don't. Was, I New York think Times, it's incredibly uh, unlikely that he knows. Yeah. Yes, I strongly recommend Anthony Gottlieb's review of his book in the New York Times book review. There's a listener named Zeus who says, Fair enough. I don't believe I've ever heard Christopher Hitchens ever admit he was substantially wrong on any issue. It appears he is the same kind of faith-based fundamentalist he accuses others of being. Well, it wouldn't be faith-based if I considered myself to be infallible, um, which, of course, I don't. Um, my favorite time is the, is the interval of time between the death of a pope and the choosing of a new one. I always want it to go on as long as possible because in that period there's no human being who can be infallible. And I always feel that that's a great, uh, a great little interval. But w- w- what comes to mind? By the way, the I would certainly... When, when were you wrong? By the way, I would, well, I would certainly say I was wrong to have opposed the, uh, the war to liberate Kuwait from Saddam Hussein. I can hardly believe I did that now. I can remember what the arguments were, and I can remember making them as well as I could, which I like to think wasn't too badly. But um, I had it all backwards on that. What does Mr. Hitchens think about the risks of arming of the Sunni in Iraq and doing so without the sanction of the government? Well, I think they're very considerable risks. It's not exactly without the sanction of the government. The government is... um, is uh, in favor of uh, the Anbar awakening, but it is obviously, as any government would have to be, uh, leery of the creation of forces, armed forces, that challenge its own monopoly of violence. The thing about Iraq is that no one has a monopoly of violence. The United States doesn't have one, but it's the nearest to having one. That means, by definition, the Iraqi government isn't the one that has the monopoly, which must make it feel insecure. Um, given the sectarian character of the society, there's a zero-sum element, unfortunately, involved. Any, any, any gain by any community can be viewed as being at the expense of the other. That's the curse of Iraqi politics. On we go. Debbie, join us. You're on. Oh, hello, Mr. Hitchens. Uh, from a fellow atheist. Uh, I just uh, have a, a one little question before I ask my big question. Have you and Graydon Carter kissed and made up yet? Well, we never had anything to kiss and make up about. Well, in some of his uh, his uh, uh, um, editorials in the beginning, he, uh, gosh, a couple of years ago, had mentioned that you guys had a rift. And I was just wondering if the rift I was... I don't uh, remember it. I mean, we've had, a very, uh, we've had a very strong public disagreement... Yes, I know. ...on the war in Iraq. Yes. Um, but he has uh, never uh, prevented me from publishing... Sort of contrary me, he's very often no, I just several times to... paid for me to go to Iraq and uh, report to the country of his own opinion. Good, right? So it's great, I think. Obviously, your rift has been mended. Uh, my question to you is: I guess there was no rift. <laughs> I thought I heard you earlier say that you did not believe Benazir Bhutto's letter from the grave that said, "In the event of my death, please blame Musharraf." I, I think I heard you say that Musharraf, in your opinion, is not to blame. Well, I think there are two senses of the word blame. Um, she had, uh, and two senses of the word responsible as well. She had said that um, the protection that she'd wanted from him, the, the level of protection uh, that she felt she was entitled to, to which she felt she was entitled, I should say, uh, had not been forthcoming, and that, and that was in itself culpable. 
Uh, but I don't think she meant it to be, uh, and I didn't read the letter as meaning that the um, Musharraf regime was trying to organize or bring about her death. Well, there I has been ongoing criticism what she had said, for what not she, protecting him. Yes, yeah. absolutely. But, yeah. but I mean, as again, I mean, as, as I say to someone who admires her and who's seen her do it, if you will, if you will suddenly push back the sunroof of your car and protrude yourself through the top in these circumstances, I mean, it is, it is a very rash thing to have been doing. I don't make her the author of her own death by saying that. I did. I have seen her and heard her say many, many times before she returned um, that it was the Al Qaeda and uh, Islamist forces that were hoping to kill her. Let me thank Debbie for the. Call. I think. I mean. I think that distinction is worth making. I don't think the Musharraf government is blameless, but I don't think that it was the author of her assassination. Mohammed, our next caller. Welcome. Hey, thank you for having me on, Dr. Kresny. I hope to be starting an internship soon with Forum. Uh, my question uh, for Mr. Hitchens is, uh, you say in your book that you hate all religions equally. And I was wondering, among the three monotheistic faiths, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, which one do you think presents a stronger argument for the existence of God? Well, I think they're all equally fallacious in that respect. Do you think one uh, can uh, prove better than the other, that there is a God, or do you think they're all equally... No, I think that, that assumption is equally weak, whoever makes it. Whether it's a Quaker, or whether it's a member of the Moqtad Asada's uh, Mahdi Army, it's just, it's just as fatuous <clears throat> to assume that, that we are here because of a divine plan rather than because of the laws of evolution via natural selection. Mohammed, thank you for the call. On we go. Chuck, you're on. Thanks a lot. Uh, I guess uh, just on that subject, I think that there are some people, uh, perhaps myself included, who uh, see in those natural laws the hand of God, and therefore there is no real supernatural is distinct from the natural. But that's not what I called about. Uh, I called because I think Mr. Hitchens is making uh, what I uh, hear the, the same dangerous mistake that a lot of people make with regards to the Iraq War, which... Uh, um, my feeling about was that if you're going to do it, you should do it right. And my main criticisms have been about all the ways in which we've kind of messed it up. But uh, uh, he seems to emphasize the military aspect about uh, defeats of uh, uh, al-Qaeda and the rejection of al-Qaeda by uh, elements of the Iraqi popula uh, population, uh, which are fine things. But I think even George Bush would tell you that the real threat of al-Qaeda and so-called Islamo-fascism is an ideological one. And uh, the warfare is, uh, is basically uh, uh, asymmetrical, so that these military defeats, I think, are of less importance than the rise of the ideology of al-Qaeda and anti-Americanism and recruiting for uh, that uh, cause. And therefore, uh, when you reckon the costs and benefits of the Iraq War, uh, it becomes a lot more difficult than just... Uh, military defeats for uh, uh, what's what's a, you know the, the American military can defeat pretty much anybody. Well, um, I, I don't have a I don't have a rooted disagreement with what you say, and I, I could tell you things about the mismanagement of the of the war that would curl your hair. Uh, but I think I was careful to say in my first reply to Mike that it wasn't just the battlefield defeat inflicted on Al Qaeda, the terrible casualties that they've had to absorb. It was the discredit that they've had to experience, undergo, in the, in the majority Sunni provinces where they had begun to try and set up an alternative government, a so-called Islamic Republic in Bakuba, um, and had revealed themselves as sadistic, um, incompetent, intolerant, corrupt, vicious, um, very largely foreign-run, and in other words, it thoroughly alienated uh, the Iraqi population so that it was a political defeat for them as well as a military one. I, I hope I made that plain. Let me thank the caller. We have uh, come to the end of the hour. I want to mention Christopher Hitchens' books again, God is Not Great, How Religion Poisons Everything, and The Portable Atheist, Essential Readings for the Nonbeliever. He writes for Slate and is contributing editor of the Atlantic Monthly and Vanity Fair. Always good to have you on. Very nice of you to have me again. I thank you. Here's a question for you from a listener as we go out. How do you celebrate New Year's Eve? And he says, Happy New Year's, which I'll say to our listeners. How, what do you do? I'll be on a plane tonight to London, so I won't know what time the balloon drops. Well, <laughs> good flying. Uh, <laughs> or I won't, know where, I, I won't know what time it is where I am. Understood. But I wish you a Happy New Year nonetheless, and <laughs> to you. my listeners as well. We yes, thank and you to for all being of you. with us. Uh, our senior editor is Dan Zoll. Our producer